I don't know about you, but nothing enhances my enjoyment of the natural world than random shite being scrawled into one of nature's most magnificent wonders. Thanks, Abdom. You're probably sick of seeing this tree, and I promise this is the last you'll see of it for a while. But the reason I had to come back is because I had to teach a client who'd hired me for some private photography tuition. And I'll be honest with you, things didn't quite go as planned. So this is my third visit back to Inflamed Hemorrhoid Waterfall. And I brought with me today Chris, who's uh, one of my private photography students and uh, Chris it's customary mm -hmm. uh, especially on your first session with me to you know bring some British chocolates I know I know you're a Brit yes and you know that I I'm a, I like my British chocolates so what, what did you bring with you I specifically bought you a twirl and a double decker which is my favorite you're already in the VIP club Chris thought it might help I have to say but uh, I mean, put your money where your mouth is. Where's where's this twirl? That's. You are gonna share, oh. aren't you? I thought you were. I thought you were down by the bench. I was when I saw that. Well, I guess I'm sharing it now, aren't I? I uh, did notice, however, Chris, mm. that that seems to be the economy size. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> are you trying to get me to lose weight oh, here? No. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I'll accept that. I do need to lose a few pund, so I'll I'll accept it with good grace and eloquence. Yeah. Oh, sorry, love. There's gluten in it. You can't eat that. Right. Anyway, so we're shooting this absolutely spectacular tree. As as always, that's the only reason I come <laughs> here. And Chris has framed up this really delicious panorama. If, if this shot turns out to be really good, Chris, mm -hmm. can, I, can I put it in the video? You can steal it. Yeah, and then well, I'm going to I'm going to copy, copy it, it. No, no matter what. As soon as he's moved on, I'm getting this shot for myself. But um, so you're starting from like about there, mm -hmm. and then sweeping through to where where does it finish? Uh, just where that waterfall is starting to bubble over so there on the a, right hand side. Maybe you can just see that waterfall there. So that's the right of the frame through to this beautiful root system. That's probably going to be quite a brilliant shot, is that? I hope so. So you don't mind if I steal that no, then? You can have it. Cheers. I'll have the troll back. Oh, God, that's a dilemma, isn't it? <laughs> oh, do I want the shot or do I want the twirl? I'll keep the twirl. Oh, he's come back. I'll come back tomorrow. <laughs> Chris's pano actually turned out really good, but I just can't stand being upstaged. So I'm going to change the music for something a bit more emotional, and then after this clip, I'll show you my shot. That was impressive. <laughs> but you know, you've got to savour oh, these I am. things. I am. You're savouring it, are you? Mm. See, now you want another one, don't you? Because you just gobbled it all. Whereas I am going to just slowly. Hey, hey! You, you've broken me. Oh! You broke me 12. Such a barbarian. Within a few minutes, Chris had framed up another stealable shot. Right, Chris has just framed up this absolutely, I don't use this word very often, magnifique telephoto shot. 
of just this, this section of the falls here. Let me just show you this shot. What I love about this shot, Chris, is it's almost a black and white shot in the center of the frame, but you've got all of the color around the edges of the frame. So it's almost like a vignette of color sucking your eye into a black and white image. And that beautiful, not even that long of an exposure on that cascade is absolutely gorgeous. What would you say about that shot, Chris? I'm not as eloquent as you, but its uh, I'd say it's magnificent. Uh, I don't know what you mean, magnificent. What, is that a word? Or is it, it? magnifique? Uh, you're getting closer. I don't know what else I could say about this shot other than that I'm a bit jealous and I'm probably going to steal it off you right, now, right about now. That's the second one today. Let's not focus on details no, like no, that. No. You know, it's just, it's all about getting the shot. Isn't sure, it? I'm good. I am keeping track though. Yeah, I've noticed. Yeah. yeah. And I was keeping track of when that double decker was going to show up. Still waiting. Here's Chris's shot. <laughs> Say that's a magnifique shot there. What would you say? It's, it's, if that's a word out of the Hardcastle dictionary, yeah. then uh, yeah, yeah, magnificent it is. Uh, no, that's not what I said, Chris. Um, I don't know what dictionary you're looking at. Magnifique. Yeah, that, there you yeah. go. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to touch your nipple there. That was a bit weird. Um, you did sign the, the waiver about the touching, didn't you? Yeah, it's fine. It's okay. You're okay with it. All right, on to the next location. <laughs> Sometimes it's the simplest shots that are the best. And after a fun day in the forest, it was time to find a campground and get cozy for the evening. And that's when things got weird. Well, welcome to the camper, Chris. Um, it's actually customary for our private tuition students to you know, provide beer or, or wine. So I just wondered what you brought. Beer? I, I brought Horlicks. Horlicks. Is it sweet? It's a it's a warm beverage for ill children. A nice warm bedtime beverage. Little boys drink it when they've got a cold. Anyway, Gavin, um, almost bedtime. Just wondered uh, where I'd be sleeping tonight. What are you talking about, sleeping? Just kind of wondered where my bed might be. You brought a, you've got a tent in your camera bag though, right? Surely you brought a tent. No, I just assumed it would be part of the deal. What? No, you, you paid for tuition, not accommodation. God, what do you think this is, eh? Where am I going to sleep then? A picnic table or something? There's bears out there. I'm not sleeping on a picnic table. I've got some bear spray. Oh, I know what we can do. Let's put them in the bathroom. Oh, but that Chris, for an extra hundred dollars, you can sleep in the bathroom. Bathroom? I just use. I just saw you use it. I'm sleeping in there. Get in the bathroom. I don't want to sleep in the bathroom. Get in the bathroom. I don't want to sleep in the bathroom. Get in the bathroom. No, I don't want to get in the. Get in that shit. That's a hundred dollars in the bag. Sorry about that. Um, just need to go for a beat. Just nudge up on it. Went for both. Come on, be quick. Uh, sorry about this. It's very uncomfortable. Um, I want a refund. Did you learn any, anything today? Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I want to talk to me a bit more about shadow speeds for waterfalls. Oh yeah, I, I always find like, hang on. Oh, that's, oh, that's good. Like one sixth of a second mm -hmm. this is usually pretty good, Chris. Um, but it really depends on your creative vision, you know. Yeah. Oh, anyway, I'm finished now, so. Yeah. Good night. Gavin, Gavin. Oh, well, Gavin. what? Ten laugh, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, silly of me. Thanks. Sleep tight, Chris. Thanks, yeah. Good night. No refunds, though. So I spent the rest of the night polishing up my Airbnb listing of the bathroom suite in the camper. And after just a few hours of terrible sleep, well, it's a cold and misty morning 
here at, we'll call it uh, Besmirched Pantaloons Pond. And um, back here with Chris. Did you have a good night's sleep, Chris? And the toilet was tight. Yeah. But uh, it was fine. Yeah, I mean, you're a bit, you're a bit tall. Yeah. Not ideal for you, but. No. Uh, Washroom was fine. I used the toilet seat as a good pillow. Not, it's not what it's meant to be used for. But anyway, this is an absolute diamond of a scene. So we, we kind of clocked this yesterday when we were driving through and there's some nice reflexion there's just a little bit of color in the canopy just over there and what i really like this morning is just this lone collection of four leaves i don't know if those are lily pads or just leaves i don't know what that is i'll, I'll try and check it out when i've zoomed in on the shot afterwards but i just love the placement of it there in that reflexion way off in the distance there's tons of lily pads and that was a problem when we first arrived, but they've just slowly drifted out of the shot to reveal this gorgeous reflection. So with the fog, the tree forms, and that little bit of color and these leaves slash lily pads, I think I've got quite a tasty composition, but I'll show you the back of the camera and you can see what it is that I've framed up. If we can see it through this thick fog. I know I'm always wishing for fog, but I've almost got more than I can handle here. And I wouldn't mind getting the drone out and flying it through the pond. But once it's gone, I, <laughs> I won't be able to find it. I'll have to trust that it'll find its way home because it's so thick. It's just an absolute, what would you call it in Britain? I'd call it pea soup. I'd call it a pea souper. Okay, so this is the back of my camera. And as you can see, <laughs> it's, it's just a foggy mess. There is nothing to see here. There you go. That's my composition. So yeah, that's my shot. Um, <laughs> I will try, I will endeavor to do this again when the fog has lifted a little bit, but you, you just can't see anything. It's just, a, it's just a gray mush. So we'll just sit tight and wait, because we know it will lift. The question is, when it does lift, will we still have that lovely reflection? I don't know, hopefully we will. But I'll just, uh, I'll just sit here waiting on my comp, camping on this shot. Did you bring, did you bring some snacks, Chris? Uh, I can do a fry up in the back of the Jeep. A fry up? A fry up, yeah, bacon eggs. Really? Yeah, fried bread. Black pudding? Chris just became my favorite client. I mean, I, I did provide you with excellent accommodations last night, so I guess it's Exquisite. fair. Look at this foggy forest up here. If we could just find um, an interesting grouping or a couple of standouts, because what's good with this is, it's on a slope, so even if you're shooting up, unless you're shooting really far up into the sky, you're not going to get any of that white gap through the canopy. You're just shooting straight into a foggy forest, so... Oh man, this might actually work. Let's, let's explore, eh? You'd think with conditions like this, it would be easy to find a shot. But no. All right, so we've staggered up and down the highway for a few minutes, trying to find an interesting group in the trees. Of course, we haven't found anything. So I've got that dilemma now. Do I bail on this shot that I've framed up across the pond and then just go searching all the way down the highway for some interesting trees? Or do I stick with it? So maybe I'll stick with this, try and get this shot. And then if we've still got a foggy forest, then we commit to trying to get some foggy forest shots. Now, Chris, you know that um, if you do start doing a fry up, you know that at the penultimate point of frying my eggs so that the yolk is perfectly cooked, like still liquid, but with none of that snot on the top that some, some weirdos yeah. like that kind of stuff. Um, just at the penultimate moment, you know the fog will lift just right and the shot will be there. The question is, will you abandon my fried egg and my perfect yolk to get this shot? I'm prepared for a, uh, a hard yolk for a good shot. I don't know if I am, Chris. <laughs> okay, I, I won't. I won't. I won't blame you. Okay. Forget a hard yolk. You know, the shot does come first every time. It really does. Okay, so the fog is lifting a little bit now. Let me just show you this. If I just flip this round, you should just be able to see a little bit of definition 
where the trees are now coming through that fog. So what I'm going to do is try and time this so that I can film the back of the camera for you with just enough clarity through the fog, but not too much so that the fog's gone. So I think I'll wait for it to lift a little bit more and then I'll film this back of the camera, show you this composition. Right, I really hope you can see this. I'm really hoping it's going to show through, but so what I've got is it's basically a reflection shot. What drew me to this scene is the tree forms that you can see in the distance. That's my blurry finger there. In the center here, there's actually, believe it or not, there's actually quite a bit of colorful canopy. There's some orange leaves still there, but it's very difficult to see those through this, this mist. And those are obviously reflected in the pond here, which it does look gorgeous. Trust me, it does look gorgeous when there's not. This is almost like 95% mist. I'm looking for 40% mist. And then in the foreground, you've got these lovely lily pads, maybe the leaves, I'm not sure. And in the right, you have this fallen tree, it's a lovely curvaceous falling tree, which is also reflected. So I really like that balance of subjects. I love the color, I love the tree forms, I love the mist. I love the reflexion and those lily pads slash leaves. It's just a case of waiting for this fog to lift just enough. with how that shot turned out. So now we're gonna head north and chase this, well, I hope, spectacular waterfall. I was there the other day and it was just a little trickle, but we've had this massive storm that very same day when I was driving back, tons of rain. And as we've been out and about in the last couple of days, we've seen lots of what I call transient waterfalls, where it's just the side of the road, there's just this full blown falls that wasn't there the day before. So I'm hoping when we get back up to the highland, that that waterfall that was a trickle will be raging. And if it is, I think we'll get a shot. So we're just driving down the highway and the sun is creeping in and blasting off this fog. But I look to the left and look at this business. Just beautiful shafts of light and beams so this might last just a few minutes i'm not going to chat to you for too long i'm just going to go handheld and try and get as many shots as i can before this moment's over but just fantastic That was a frantic scramble. I don't really know if any of those turned out because everything I shot was handheld, running around, chasing the light, well, chasing the, the fog and how the light hit that. And I'm pretty sure I'll have to crop in to a lot of these images because I was shooting with this 14 to 24. It's just what I had on the camera. And because it was such a scramble, I just dashed into the forest with this on, only to realize it's probably a bit too wide <laughs> for what we were shooting, but I think there might be a few crops in there. Well, if there is, you've probably already seen them. So at, but at this time, I don't know. Did you get anything? Chris? I had a 24 to 70. I might have got a couple. Well, are you being modest? Yeah, mine's longer than yours. Right, let's go back to the car, shall we? He's right, it is. Scotia. But this adventure continues in the next episode where I capture my best image of the year. Now it's been a while since I hit you guys with some top-notch bloopers. So... Magnifico. Yeah, that, there you go. Yeah. Oh sorry I didn't mean to touch your nipple there. That was a bit weird. Um, it's okay.
Oh, don't sue me, will you? No. You did sign a, a waiver about the, the touching. <laughs> you brought hor You brought what? Horlicks, you know, nice warm bedtime beverage. <laughs> That's pretty good. No, you, you paid for tuition, not accommodation. God, what do you think this is, eh? What kind of an outfit do you think this is? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> That's some good acting there. Hang on. Get in the bathroom. <laughs> Get in the bathroom. <laughs> what are you doing there? Get in the bathroom! <laughs> <laughs> okay, go for it.